Hi again, everyone, and welcome to Flyer Nation, your weekly look inside Lewis University Athletics. I'm John Fitzgerald, and we'll talk Flyer Cross Country here this afternoon as we're joined by two-time Great Lakes Valley Conference Coach of the Year, James Kearney, whose ball clubs had an outstanding weekend at the GLVC Conference Championships on the Lewis University campus this past weekend. The women finishing in second place amid the 14-team field while the men captured their second consecutive conference crown. And coach, let's start right there. Really an outstanding weekend for both your men's and your women's squads in the championships. Yeah, thank you. It was, uh, it was a lot of fun. Um, I, th I think the most important thing as, as you know, we're talking about the postseason, you know, really, really keys on making sure you're right on the right day. Um, I, I felt like our attention to detail is, is really what helped separate us and, and really have our best performance on Saturday. You know, we've, we've been building a lot of momentum all year and, and something that I'm really looking forward to seeing, hey, where do we go at the end of this year? You know, how, where does your work lead you, you know, as, as we kind of prepare from way back in June till now? Um, that's the exciting part about our sport, but it's also kind of the terrifying part as a coach. <laughs> um, you, you never know, you know, did we miss anything? Did we skip a step? Because it's all focused so much on, you know, conference, regionals, nationals. It's, it's something that you know, keeps me up at night sometimes, but at the same time, um, I'm really excited to see the work pay off for these young men and women and, and see what we can do. Obviously in a situation with cross country, a lot of times just based upon the rankings, how they rank the runners at the end of a race, it becomes a little bit of an individualized aspect, but you bring up a great point. This is something that you could have a phenomenal first seven, eight weeks of the campaign running wise individually but a lot really hinges on that final conference championship. And that's tough mentally for student athletes to overcome. Yeah, you know, especially when you talk about stress of school, you know, stress of life, you know, and, and all of the auxiliary things in the background. And, and that's why we discuss all the time in our program is do your job. I, I don't need you to be superhuman. I don't need you to, to do anything that you're not capable of doing. I just need you to do and be the best version of you. And so that's something that we discuss a lot, you know, I, something that when we talk about attention to detail, it's like I'm, I'm not asking for anything that's totally egregious. I'm just asking you to, you know, drink 96 ounces of water and, and get eight <laughs> hours of sleep and make sure you do your homework on time so that you're not so stressed out and get your mileage in and, and do the things that are necessary to be successful day in, day out, you know, do your job. And, and that's something that, you know, it's kind of been our mantra this, this fall in particular is, you know, I, I don't need superhuman. I just need you to be the best version of yourself. And, and that's something that we kind of tackle and approach every single day. You've had great success over the years in being able to recruit outstanding runners who have gone on and had phenomenal careers during their four years with the Flyers. And you look at the time aspect, you look at their athleticism, those are huge key components to that success. But really the mental grind of the everyday effort, especially within a team construct of they're carrying the weight for everybody else on this team with their performance on a daily basis. The internal motivation is really different than a lot of student athletes, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's a lifestyle. I mean, you, you really have to be committed. And, and we talk about, you know, the, the general college lifestyle. Oh, you know, I stayed up late one night and did an all-nighter. or I, You know, I ate like crap one night. And I think the most important part for us is, is that, you know, we're always focused on the end. We're always focused on the big picture, um, but we're taking a day by day approach. And so it's kind of two ideas, right? You need to do all of this for the end. Um, and so that's, it's kind of a, it's kind of an unnerving proposition sometimes, but you know, when, when we're looking at student athletes coming out of high school, we're looking for students that are really committed to being a part of something bigger than themselves, you know, and, and really committed to not only seeing how good they can be, but seeing how good they can be within the group and within the culture that we've kind of developed and created, um, that's not an easy idea. It's not an easy idea to kind of give up the self for the group. Um, but I think that we've tried to foster an environment where a lot of our students can come here, they can be successful and they can really take things to the next level and be a part of something bigger than just themselves. Well, I, I think what you touch on is probably the struggle of a lot of coaches is that team culture, building that bond, building the fact of you are part of a whole as opposed to as you come up trying to get a scholarship, trying to get a spot in a college roster, it's really a little bit more individualized. How do you go about doing that from the first day they walk, set foot on campus? 
Oh, <laughs> that's a ten thousand dollar question, right? <laughs> um, so you know, the the big thing that that we're always kind of constantly looking at and, and constantly talking about is is. We, we cover that in the recruiting process, obviously. First time they walk on campus, even as a prospect, we're discussing, hey, th these are the expectations, these are the goals, this is what we expect of our student athletes. Um, but the first time we have our first team meeting, I said, okay, you're here, why? Why are you here? You need to know the why. And I think that if that's something that they can consistently internally you know, focus and, and continue to resonate within themselves. I think that that gives them the motivation every single day to, to get up and get out the door and, and to do, because our sport is a grind. It, it truly is a day in, day out, hard work job, uh, almost. Almost. You know? and, and so it's, it's something that, you know, we, we talk about that a lot. We talk about the why. And I think if you know the why, it makes the process a little bit more enjoyable. It makes the process something that is not necessarily a process, it's, it's a fun journey. Absolutely. Um, and so, you know, we, we discuss those things quite a bit, um, but I tell them, hey, have that why, put it somewhere where you're gonna see it every day and hold yourself to that level of accountability. And that's what it really boils down to is, did you do the work? You know, and do you go to the line on race day in championship season knowing that I've checked every box? I'm ready. And I think that that's what separates good teams from great teams. Absolutely. That makes a ton of sense. Now, you've had a great run here from a standpoint of individual runners, both on the track and field side, also on the cross country side, over 30 All Americans. If you were to meet somebody on the street, which I'm sure you have, or a prospective student, maybe not even a student athlete, what's your quick elevator pitch for Lewis University? I think the quick elevator pitch for Lewis University, that's a, that's a great question. Um, I just say, hey, look, this is, this is a place where we're trying to build something. We're trying to build something unique and, and specific to our university and our circumstances, but how good do you want to be? I think that we have an environment and we have a culture that fosters you know, pursuing excellence at the highest level. If you want that, I think you should come look. And, and so that's something that you know, we, we talk about a lot is, is pursuit of excellence everyone's level of excellence is different for themselves, right? Everyone's goals are a little bit different, but how do you get them to have the same goal? And so, you know, we, you know, the, the quick pitch is that, but I think the overall arching theme of all of that is, is how can I be the best version of myself within the group? And how do I know my role? How do I use that to elevate everyone around me? That's something that we talk about quite a bit and something that I think that this team has really embraced at a high level, and, and I think that's why we're seeing the results that we're seeing now. And that's really fostered itself on beyond your current roster, beyond prospective student athletes. You have a really strong and very involved alumni base, don't you? Yeah, it's been a lot of fun to, I mean, even Saturday, you know, hosting is probably not the most enjoyable experience. <laughs> um, you know, it, it can be a little bit terrifying, but it creates an environment where our alums come back and they're so excited. You know, I'm, I'm having my alums come up and hug me after the results and, and you see these things. And, you know, we, we have some post-collegiate athletes that are still working with me on the professional level and, and you know, they're a volunteer assistant coaches now. Um, so they get to train and, and do some of those things with us, but they're the first text messages I get when, you know, when they see results. And, and so it is a really exciting endeavor that we've and, and, and kind of culture that we've created um, that the guy 10 years ago when I first took over the programs feels just as much invested as the current athletes today because it's just like hey I paved the way for this person and and the success that they're enjoying now is is you know I had a little bit to do with that and that's a little feather in their cap I think that that's something that when they come back and they see us and they see us perform they say I help that even if it's just you know right. one half a percent I help that and so that's why I think, you know, Lewis, young and old, we're able to kind of come together and we're able to kind of share that common bond and that commonality. It's, uh, you know, when we started it, you know, it was a dream and it was a hope. Um, I think that now we're, we're kind of further along the process. It's, it's more than a hope. I, I hope that it's becoming a reality. And, you know, the next goal then is, is to, you know, go pursue that at the national level, at the highest level. Well, that really, that shows that involvement just due to the fact of the team culture you're talking about, the fact that that permeates well after they leave the Romeoville campus. And you mentioned about hosting, and there's a lot of work that goes into hosting. Sometimes from a coaching standpoint, it'd be easier to get on a bus and go play somewhere. 
um, and just have to worry about showing up and coaching your team. But the fact that we did host this past week, obviously the crossover on an annual basis, which is the biggest Division II cross-country meet in the country, really does provide a showcase on our campus with a cross-country course that very few other institutions of this caliber have to offer. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. Um, but I, I, I just think that I'm just so fortunate. I'm so blessed to have the resources that I do. Um, you know, yesterday we went and ran on the cross country course, you right. know, and, and we have a place to go. Um, I, I just think that that is something that is so unique to, to our campus, so unique to the experience at Lewis University and, and the ability to have parents come back and, and see their son or daughter compete at a high level and see them compete in a national caliber event um, was something that, you know, wasn't necessarily the, the initial objective when I created the meet, but it has become the beautiful unintended consequence of it, you know, and, and to have recruits come and, and watch us and, and to say, make a phone call to a student in California and they say, oh, I've heard of Lewis mm -hmm. Crossover. Um, I think that it's opened up a lot of pathways. It's opened up a lot of avenues for our program. And I think it's opened up a lot of avenues for other programs to say, well, hey, cross country has done this. Maybe I can do this as well. And, and again, I, I think it goes back to that idea of knowing your role, embracing it, but using it to uplift everyone around you. I, I think the entire department now, you know, has, has kind of taken that on where, you know, I talked to Joe Peruzzi over at Men's Lacrosse and he's just like, I love the events that you guys put on. Mm -hmm. We want to do something similar. You know, give me some ideas. And it has turned out to be a phenomenal showcase, I think, for the university, both athletically and just to get that many people on campus as well. Yeah, and, and I think the really exciting part now for us is, is that, you know, we have four grad transfers in the program. And I think that it goes a long way from, well, I ran in the crossover and, you know, I, I looked into Lewis afterwards and I got into the occupational therapy program or I looked at the MBA or, you know, I, I noticed this and that about campus and it was just beautiful. I just think that we have been able to, again, if, if you build it, they'll come kind of in a <laughs> in a funny way. But but at the same time, like. We're just this quiet little hidden gem sometimes that I don't think that people necessarily know about until they get here and they just say, wow, look at everything that's here. And this is another pathway for us to continue to do it, not only through the college events, but we host a number of high school events as well. Mm -hmm. and, and we've just seen, you know, just the interest in the program just blossom from there. It seems like a really common refrain of this hidden gem. Once people get on campus, they, they really, for the first time, realize just what a jewel this campus in Romeoville tucked away tucked away has been. So what's next? You guys win the GLVC championships on the men's side last weekend. The women finished second. Both squads are going to advance now to the NCAA Midwest Regional, which will be done in Evansville in two weekends. If you handicap that a little bit, what do you have coming up next? Oh, man. Um, <laughs> I, hopefully success. <laughs> um, you know, I, I feel like our men um, have really had this mindset, and, and this is what we talked about on day one, it's, it's November 20th or it's nothing. And, and so, you know, November 20th is the national meet down in, in, in Tampa, Florida, and it's something that, you know, we, we've discussed quite frequently, you know, it's, it's a step in the process. And, and so the speech I gave, and I gave after, after conference was, I was like, well, that was a lot of fun. Now we're back to work. And, you know, it's, it's kind of a, a, hard, a hard mindset to have. Um, but it's something that, you know, I, I really, really just continue to say, okay, you know, to, to reference a, a, a famous NFL football coach, we're on a Cincinnati, you know, and, and so that's something that we kind of talked about. It's just like, hey, that was a lot of fun, but it's on to the next thing, and, and this is what's in front of us, and let's do our job. Um, for the women, I told them in August I thought that they could qualify for the national meet, and I, and I truly believed it. I don't think they necessarily totally believed me, right. um, but... I just knew what we had and, and I watched some of the pieces starting to move around and how they were gelling and how they were starting to connect with each other. And that's something that we haven't had since 2015, but I, I absolutely saw something going on um, and, and it's just continued to grow and continue to blossom and, you know, they've kind of embraced this, you know, the women of Lewis mantra and, and that's something that's been a lot of fun and, and something that, you know, when when we talked about, you know, with some of my seniors, like, hey, what do you think we can do at conference? I said, well, why don't we do what we're capable of doing and we'll let everybody else worry about what we're doing. And, and I think that that's been kind of the, the big th step that they've taken is 
well, let's not worry about everybody else. Let's just do us. And I keep telling them, us is pretty good. You know, right. I, I've told every coach that's ever asked me, like, how good are you guys? Well, I think we're pretty good. I don't know what that means, um, but I do. I think we're pretty good. Um, does that necessarily mean that I think that we're going to get an automatic advancing spot? I don't know. Um, I know that if we do what we're capable of doing, we're pretty good, and, and we're going to be in the mix. I think people are starting to recognize that, and that's why the rankings keep jumping us up and moving us around. But, uh, but I think we're, you know, we're going to be tough. It's just a matter of can we, can we seal the deal now? Can we, do, can we finish the job? And, and can, we, you know, can we do what we're capable of doing? I think as long as we do that, we're going to be pretty happy. Well, congratulations on the season so far, and best of luck coming up in the regionals. John, thanks for having me. It was a pleasure. That's two-time Great Lakes Valley Conference Coach of the Year, James Kearney. His flyers, both on the men's and women's side, will, in two weeks, travel down to Evansville, Indiana, to take part in the NCAA Division II Midwest Regional. We'll preview the week ahead in Flyer Athletics as Flyer Nation continues right after this timeout. <laughs> Welcome back to Flyer Nation. Don't forget, coming up tonight, the annual Flyer Fest returns to Neil Carey Arena as we kick off the men's and women's basketball campaigns. There'll be free pizza and drinks for all Lewis University students beginning at 845. All students will receive a free t-shirt and have a chance to win Flyer gear, while one lucky student will have a chance to shoot for a semester's worth of free books. That's the Flyer Fan Fest tonight at 845 inside Neil Carey Arena. Elsewhere, the women's volleyball team will host conference matches on Friday night and Saturday afternoon. The Flyers will celebrate Senior Day on Friday evening at 7 o'clock against Southwest Baptist. Then on Saturday at 3 p.m., the Flyers will take on Rockhurst. Both matches will be at Neil Carey Arena. The Flyer men's and women's soccer teams will be in Missouri for big GLVC matches against Maryville and Missouri State this weekend. To close out their regular seasons, both the men and the women will look to gain ground in the GLVC standings in hopes of hosting a home match in the postseason conference tournament. Women's tennis is on the road at the NIU Invite. Women's bowling will take on Valparaiso. And the men's and women's swimming teams will compete at Illinois Tech this weekend. Stay up to date with the latest in Flyer Athletics at lewisflyers.com and on Twitter at lewisflyers. That'll do it for us this week. I'd like to thank Head Lewis Cross Country Head Coach James Curdy for being our guest. For our executive producer, John Kilpatrick, and our entire Flyer Nation crew, this is John Fitzgerald. We'll see you next week right here on Flyer Nation. Flyer Nation.